Hi folks, welcome back to the Django 2 inch by inch series. Today's course is all about setting up Django 2 using Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code has become one of the most popular IDEs over the last little while. I've recently started to use it with my Python projects and now with my Django projects. In this course, I'll take you through everything you need to do to set your environment to be able to use Django 2 with Visual Code. Let's go have some fun. So what is VS Code? Visual Studio Code is a free code editor with support for development operations like debugging, task running, and version control. It aims to provide just the tools a developer needs for a quick code build debug cycle and leaves more complex workflows to a fuller featured IDE. This is from the Visual Studio Code Facts. Listen, I have always been a PyCharm user with, with Django for as long as I've been using Django, and I like it very much, but I feel like so many people are starting to use Visual Code, we're starting to use it at work, so I really wanted to throw myself into it to be able to compare and contrast, so that's why we're here. Okay, so step one is to get the core setup steps out of the way. If you haven't done so already, you want to, you want to install a supported version of Python onto your computer. Probably the easiest way to do that is to go up to python.org and there's a big download button that you can access for your operating system. If you don't want to do that, you can use other specific avenues, maybe through PIP or Homebrew or Anaconda, depending upon your operating system and your environment. There's a whole host of ways to do it. None of them are tricky. Then we have to install Visual Studio Code Python extension. And I give you the link here, but you can simply go up to the Visual Studio homepage and search for Python extension. And once you do that, it'll look just like I showed you here with this big green install button. Hit that and you're off and running. And this page is only for the Windows users among us. Make sure the location of your Python interpreter is included in your path environment variable. You can check this by opening a command prompt and typing in path on Windows, just like I have it here. A typical path you would see for Python if it's indeed in your path statement would be C, program files, Python, Python 36, for instance. If it's not set, you wanna do the following. Go to control panel, access user accounts, access the change my environment variables link, click on the link for path, select the edit button to edit your path, and then add the correct path for your Python installation and click OK. And again, that correct path may vary, but it's most likely going to look like what I give you here in blue. You can verify by checking your path and ensuring your Python install directory is showing up now by again issuing that path command. The next thing you want to do is create a virtual environment for Django. No matter what ID you're using for Django, this is always a great idea. Using a virtual environment avoids installing Django into a global Python environment and gives you exact control over the libraries used in an application. So to do this, you create a new folder to hold your project, either through the command line using a makedir or through your file system itself. I created two different ones. You'll see the vs underscore code underscore dj underscore project, and then I created a second one called new project. In most of these slides, you'll see the new underscore project. Continuing with creating our virtual environment, now we want to access our terminal window. So from anywhere in your project explorer, this gray section here, you can right click and select open in terminal from the context menu or the drop down that comes up. Now you should see exactly what I have here. Well, not exactly, but something that looks very similar to what I have here. Continuing with step three, creating our virtual environment, you should be in the directory you created to hold your project. To check that, Type the word PWD if you're a Mac or Unix variant user, or if you're on Windows, you can do echo, percent sign CD, percent sign. Once you have confirmed that you're in the right directory, we'll create the virtual environment using this command. Python 3, if you're on Mac or Linux, just Python is all you should need if you're on Windows, dash M, V, E, N, V, E, N, V, or whatever you want to call the environment. By convention, a lot of people call it E, N, V. On Windows, again, it's here, Python, dash M, V, E, N, V. ENV. So now you can select your Python interpreter. You could go to view in VS Code and select command palette or select the up arrow CMD and P. Type Python in the search and select your Python version. This may vary, but it should look something like this. We go up to view, we go to command palette, and right there, Python interpreter for me, it's this guy down here, 3.72 64-bit ENV VNV and it's just that easy. Also in the lower left-hand corner, you should see, once you select that, Python 3.72, 
whatever it is, 64-bit and your environment, like I have it here, ENV, VENV, you can see how that relates to what we typed into that command. Once you fired off that command, you should easily be able to now see in your structure of your project, in your Explorer, ENV, under that will be bin and activate and some other files, but that's what it should look like. And here in step four, we'll activate the virtual environment. Now, if you close and reopen your terminal window, code will automatically activate your virtual environment. So it should go from this, where the virtual environment is not started, it looks like a regular command prompt, to this with the ENV in parentheses. So the name of your virtual environment that will start this statement here at your command prompt. Another way to activate if this doesn't work for you is to use source space env slash bin slash activate, right? env being the name of our virtual folder and then bin, which is the thing we need to activate against. And on Windows, it would be env backslash script backslash activate. And to deactivate, you simply do deactivate from the command line. I found that that works very well for me. Having already installed our virtual environment, now we have to install our guest of honor, Django. So that's simple. From inside our virtual environment in the, at the command line, we want Python 3 minus m pip install Django. And that shouldn't be uppercase. It should be lowercase. Just like this, guys. OK, Python 3 minus m pip install Django. And on, on Windows, you won't need the Python 3, of course, just Python. Because you shouldn't get this error, but if you get no module name pip, you want to install pip, you can do a Python minus m in short pip dash dash default dash pip or some other way to correct that condition, but you really shouldn't get that. Now to confirm that Django has been installed, you can do a pip freeze from the command line and you'll see Django equal equals, and then whatever your version is at the time of this creation, it's 2.1.5. All right, we are ready to create our first Django project. Step six, pat yourself on the back, guys. In terms of Django, a project holds your configuration files and the various applications or Python packages you wish to deploy to come together to create your full-fledged web application. Before you create an application, you must create its project folder. Think of it as a container for your applications. To create a project, we use the Django utility called Django-admin. To create the project, do the following from your virtual environment. Make sure you're in your virtual environment. Django-admin start project, and then whatever you want to call your project. I called mine very creatively, my underscore project. So once you run this command, you'll know that it worked. First of all, you won't get an error. It'll just return to the next line, but you should see a structure that gets automatically created that looks like this. Under that new project folder that you created where everything is in, you'll see my underscore project, which is that Django project folder that you just created. And that should be where this file called manage.py lives. That will become more and more important throughout your entire Django career. Then we have some other files in there. I won't go in great detail for all of these, but let me just mention them. Django, there's a Django subfolder with the same name as your project folder. Then you'll have the init.py. This is simply Django's way of letting you know, hey, this is a Python patch package, which is significant to Python. Then you'll have the very important Django project settings file. We'll be in and out of there throughout our whole career. And then urls.py. This is a way of Django to provide paths to various pages on our website. We'll definitely get more into that. And the wizg.py file, this is used for production web servers. All right, this is a very exciting time for somebody who's new to Django because we are going to launch our development web server. So from within your virtual environment, you want to CD into that My Project folder that we just created. So we're in our project, and when you do an LS or a DIR in Windows, you'll see manage.py and that sub My Project folder, or whatever you called your project. It might not be My underscore project for you, I understand. So now, at the command prompt, if you see manage.py, you want to issue the following code on Mac and Unix variants or Linux. Python 3 manage.py run server. And on Windows, it should just be Python manage.py run server. After you do that, a whole bunch of code should spit out. And at the bottom, you will see a URL. And it should be exactly what I have here, 127.0.0.1 with a port of 8,000. And that's by default. You can change and run this on a different port. And I give you the command here, Python 3 manage.py run server and whatever port you want, like 8,001, 8,002, 5,000, whatever you want. And when you click on that link, ta-da, you get the Django rocket. 
This install worked successfully. Congratulations. We are now up and running using Django and Visual Studio Code. Great job, guys. And guys, whenever you run that command, I just want to make mention of that, the 127.0.0.1.8000. If for some reason you get a page cannot be found, that probably just means that your server is no longer running. You want to go back and run the python3 manage.py run server, okay? So don't get alarmed if that happens. It's happened to all of us a million times. Now, we'll pull back the curtain a little bit on a wonderful utility in Django called the administrator interface or the administrative interface. So before we access the admin interface, make sure that you run what's known as a manage py migrate. Python 3 manage.py migrate. Usually we create this after we create our tables, but I just wanted to give you a little preview because man, it's slick. And I'll I'll light it up for you too after we're done. So once we do the migrate, then we want to do the Python 3 manage py create super user, create super user, dash dash username equals and then choose a name. It'll then prompt you for an email and a password, which you'll have to answer twice. Then to access this and make sure again that Python 3 manage.py run server is still running, you'll go to that URL 127.0.0.1 colon 8000 for the port and then slash admin and you'll be prompted for those very credentials to get into the administration module. And let's take a look at what it looks like. Okay, so we're here, right? The 127.0.0.1.800. All you need to do is put your slash admin prompts you for your credentials and we give it to them and then you see here site administration we're going to build this over time for sure but if you had groups you'd have the groups your one user will be there it gives you all sorts of other stuff we can set it up we'll have a whole class dedicated to administration in Django so we'll have a lot of fun guys but great job Okay, Django family, thank you for watching till the end. If this class has helped you, consider helping me to continue to bring these classes to you and others. Helping is easy. Just do the following. First, subscribe to this Yogi Coder YouTube channel. Next, like this video and leave whatever comments and questions you'd like. And finally, share this video on any and all social media channels with your friends and your colleagues. And as always, this presentation and any associated code will be stored up on GitHub at the link that you can find below. Okay, guys, that's it for now. We'll see you in the next one. We have a lot more to cover with Django. We're going to have a great time.